Well, hello, friends and families, and welcome back to another episode of Love and Life. Today, it is me. <laughs> Aaron is out in Chicago right now. He had uh, his annual business trip with his company where, um, you know how companies get together and we'll have like a big, like, here's what we're doing this next year and things like that. I don't remember what the word is for that, but anyhow, so he's been out since, uh, Wednesday. Today is Thursday and he will be back tomorrow. So it is another solo episode today. Um, and you know, I'm just going to be honest with everybody. These are hard times. <laughs> uh, having a, a six month old and working full time. And then my husband traveling, it's, uh, it can be quite a lot, but you know, um, still I feel that I'm very thankful to have a community. Um, there is a friend of mine who comes over and helps on the days that Erin is out and she'll play with Keo and do some light um, things around the house that, you know, allow me to just kind of decompress because I just never know how Keo's night is going to go. And so if he has a hard night or, you know, it's just kind of long then just having that short little break for a couple of hours in the afternoon after work really helps me to recalibrate so that, you know, I'm not kind of dragging at work the next day. So, you know, I was kind of reflecting on the message too. Um, and uh, I remembered the part that was saying that even when you receive blessings, like, right, even in good times, uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be any difficulties or tribulations. And so, you know, it's like, it's such a blessing to have a partner. And, you know, of course, I wouldn't have it any other way to, you know, have my son uh, with me and be able to take care of him. Um, and so, you know, with that comes these kind of things. So, yeah, I guess kind of um, leading up to this recording, I knew I, I had my mind and my heart set that I really wanted to make it a better effort to be more consistent. And I know that there have been, uh, well, there was one span of time, you know, when I got pregnant that we didn't record anything. And then sometimes uh, with the schedules being conflicting or, you know, whatever it may be, uh, we don't post and so, you know, today, even though it's just me, I decided that it is worth it to post and provide something. Um, and I really felt heartened and encouraged. So I wanted to say thank you to you all who received the last episode so well. Um, it was so refreshing to my heart to see the comments and the positive interest in my new personal YouTube channel. Um, and you know, it's something that I'm really excited about, really invested in, and it's a labor of love. Um, you know, I really wanna be here as a supportive influence for people who are looking to uh, have alternative, uh, how can I say alternative? <laughs> methods uh, and systems to raise their children. Um, and one of the comments was talking about uh, how they wanted to, I think somebody said they wanted to share the content with a newcomer um, who's looking into alternatives to the public school system. And so um, that really just like lifted up my heart and my mood because that's exactly what it's for. That's why I made it. And uh, so to see that it is being received well uh, is really something that encourages me to keep doing it. Uh, so thank you so much to the people who commented, the people who watched the video and who are sharing it around with others. Um, you know, every, every impression matters 
and you know every pair of eyeballs that can see it uh, really means a lot to me so I wanted to open up uh, with some those updates I guess um, and yeah so let's go ahead and get into the heart of today and I was just kind of reviewing the Sunday message and you know for me this theme never gets old the theme of make yourself and you know you are responsible for the second creation God gives you all the resources as they are and then it's our responsibility to take those resources and to turn them into what we need them to be um, for me I guess just kind of reflecting on my life in Providence I think that there have been so many um, so many times where I have beat myself up and I think that this is true for all of us to an extent, right? I think if you're in this history, right, you have to have some level of uh, like standard that you're holding for yourself and some responsibility that you have and you believe that God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You recognize and acknowledge that you are imperfect and therefore there are ways for you to improve. And so in that sense, right, all of us probably are really tough on ourselves. And, you know, we really have these moments of fire and passion and enthusiasm. And in those highs, we make promises and, you know, God, I'm going to go out and evangelize and I'm gonna sing a thousand praise songs and you know we we really commit to everything according to that like euphoria that our spirit is experiencing in those moments and you know when the retreat is over or when the uh, we used to have you know the Holy Spirit movements when it's over and life kind of goes back to normal right you still have to go to school the next day or still have to go to work the next day then it can be kind of hard to reconcile that fervor and that passion with your day-to-day -day life and to create space to incorporate it. And so inevitably, right, we end up kind of letting it slip. And then before we know it, it's like that promise has been broken or we fail to keep it and then the time that we set to do it passes and then we're repenting and you know god i really have the heart to do it i really want to do it um but i wasn't able to or you know i i forgot and so i guess i'm saying all this to express that when we have this heart of course we should reflect and consider but this opportunity to restore ourselves and to try again is just the most hopeful thing, the most hopeful blessing that we have in this history, that God is not just a one and done, like, you know, you told me you were gonna do this, but you didn't do it, and so, you know, like, that's it, I'm moving on from you. And it without fail, I just always am reflecting on the natural temple, Wal Myungdong, and how even Sun Sim experienced this where, you know, he was fiery and excited about building the ambition masterpiece and at first he thought it was just going to be stone bleachers you know all of us have heard this story so many times but every time I struggle and every time I stumble and trip up I just picture the ambition masterpiece like almost naturally and it just lifts my mood instantly because I know that 
God is still working on me and he, he is not going to give up as long as I don't give up. Right. And so when I hear this message, I feel the urgency for sure. Uh, since I made it very clear, you know, I can't keep telling you this same thing forever. Um, but when I hear it, I take it as an opportunity that there are areas that I haven't yet finished making myself or areas that I really want to grow and refine. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I think just having that, that sense of hope that there is still work to be done because, you know, I shared with you guys, uh, I don't know, maybe like a month ago, <laughs> my own personal proverb about the idle mind and, you know, how it just causes our spirits to wither and essentially dry up. But I think when we receive the message like this, it allows us to refresh ourselves and to know that to grow is to live and I really like the part of the message that says there's no limit to how much you can make yourself. There's no limit to how far you can go spiritually. And when I think about it like that, it really does reshape the perspective that we're not working towards a finite goal. We're not working, you know, if you were to compare it to money, we're not working toward a dollar amount. And once I've made a million dollars, I'm done. It's like, there's no limit to how much you can have. And then when you start to like put that in perspective, it's like, well, if I had a million dollars, I could do, you know, whatever, your dream vacation and cover all of your expenses, do the most fun things, activities, go sightseeing, eat really good food, but eventually like that money will run out. And knowing that what we are striving for is limitless and that we enjoy it not only for the duration of our time here on earth in the body, but eternally in spirit. I guess what it makes me think is that every opportunity that I don't take to make myself is like lost potential in the sense that I guess when you think about it in terms of, for example, studying for a test, you can study and do well. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can procrastinate and then study cram and still pass the test, but it it's much better if you build up that that study over time because then that knowledge will last you. Does that make sense? Am I making sense, you guys? <laughs> I feel like this this session is gonna be an interesting one. I'm starting my recording quite late uh, and I can sympathize with Eddie who did the Tuesday podcast and said that he was recording at 2 a.m. or something outrageous like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just something that really moves me to do more and to look for more work. And these days, I have to say, I'm feeling really grateful because I have been able to put into practice, you know, our uh, message from a few weeks ago now, which was, you know, basically how good it is to be normal, right? Getting back to the norm was the movement that Aaron and I wanted to start. And for me, starting from, you know, very basic, just like, getting active again, going to the gym, not trying to be a bodybuilder or anything like that, but simply just moving and getting in tune with myself. Like that has been so 
like great <laughs> in terms of how much more clarity I have mentally and the energy that I feel, the way that I carry myself, all of it has been really great. Um, but then I think once you start, it kind of inevitably snowballs and you start to pick up momentum in other areas too. And so, you know, now I've really turned my eyes back to evangelism. Um, and, you know, this is something that I think families should talk about more is, of course, raising a family is a super important component of our faith. And of course, like we have the responsibility of raising the second gen and also really keeping our faith deeply rooted, supporting the church, but that supporting the church, like what does that look like? If you guys can hear my dryer going off in the background, I'm so sorry. In time. Um, Okay, let me see. What was I talking about? Um, what does our support look like in the church? Um, yeah, I think... Well, I have to say, from my experience, I have run with some families. I, I really wish there were more families, or at least more community. And, you know, I think that Houston probably homes all of them. <laughs> so spread the love to Atlanta. Um, but yeah, from what I've experienced, like, I think families really kind of can be siloed a little bit. But then I've always seen that they step up when there's times for events. And they're always the ones who are working behind the scenes and making sure that everyone eats and that, you know, everyone is taken care of and uh, is hosted well. And so I think that that work is so important and, you know, Sunsim really holds uh, families in such high regard, which is something that I'm thankful for. Um, but yeah, I think, for myself, because I'm speaking from the perspective of a church that's still in the pioneering stage, I feel like even though my title may be blessed family member, but my role definitely should be more kind of front lines because we're a church that still really needs to get up off the ground. Um, so that's really where my thoughts and my heart is right now uh, because, you know, I think I mentioned it last week, but during prayer and just reflecting, I felt really sorry to the Trinity for our failure to grow really um, up until this point. And so it's something that, you know, we who are here are really burning in our hearts to uh, really take this in uh, a new direction to raise the level. Um, so what we're looking at is a dual system Bible study method. So having virtual sessions and in-person sessions um, and just kind of trying to grab the fish where they are. Um, if that makes sense. So uh, for me, it's really looking at areas that I would frequent uh, rather than just trying to pound the ground on campus. I think that should be, you know, kind of dedicated to campus members or career members strictly. Um, like I just kind of think about it like carrying my newborn son around and <laughs> Talking to these college age children, not children, sorry, that's not what I meant. Oh my gosh. Um, but you know, college age students and going out with my child 
and trying to, you know, have a conversation. Eh, I don't know, but maybe we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I would love to have more communication, I guess, with other families about how they get involved with ministry. I know that uh, they do a lot of financial support and again, making sure that the campus members who are running are able to treat a newcomer to lunch or a bubble tea or a coffee or something. Um, and you know, that's also an area that I'm happy to be a part of if we had campus members. <laughs> so we'll get there. Um, I'm just kind of info dumping on you guys. I hope this is all, you know, um, useful for you to kind of think about, um, you know, in your own regions or if you're thinking about pioneering. Um, I do want to give a shout out and recognition to Charles and Sophie in Alabama because they are a young couple and they have one son who is, oh, I think he's one now. And then they have their second on the way, but they're so like faithful and diligent and running and evangelizing. Um, I know Charles evangelized his brother. So, you know, when I see things like that, I just have to like, uh, put my chin down, right? And just like march forward because I can do it, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess what I really want is to know how you guys are doing. Um, I think I've had my head a little bit in the sand here, uh, especially I know everybody got to gather for the, uh, soccer tournament and I missed it. Um, you know, so I, I would just love to catch up with people and just, kind of regain that that energy right now I do feel it coming back um, through uh, prayer and repentance um, something that Eddie said on Tuesday really just um, like sat in my heart in a in a good way um, but he was talking about going to evangelize uh, two people, I think it was, at his school. And he was sharing about the prayer that he prayed before connecting with them and that he spent time repenting. And, you know, I just feel like this is, a theme that's been coming up a couple times this week actually because I think uh, Pastor Sky also talked about it today or yesterday. Um, you know how we really just need to um, the, the image that's coming to mind is like using sandpaper like scrubbing off that calloused heart um, or calloused thoughts that come when we don't like fully empty ourselves and we try to hold some back um and so you know for whatever reason it may be i know how refreshing it is to kind of come out of that and so it's been really nice to hear uh similar stories and uh testimonies coming from others as well so yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, let me kind of, I'm gonna grab my phone here and just glance at my notes and see if there was anything else I wanted to share. Um, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I made a note on this statement and yeah yeah this one was heavy i'm gonna share it with you guys it said uh, people who are not equipped are hopeless and there is nothing to love 
And I felt that. I was like, wow, you know, it really is that important that we make ourselves in the way that God really hopes for. Um, and I think through various experiences that I have had personally, um, in different areas of my life, I've gotten to feel like even just a taste of God's deep heart um, and how hurt it can make you feel when the, like when someone that you are investing in to like every degree doesn't like rise to that level of investment and you just feel like gosh like I'm just pouring and pouring and pouring and like it kind of feels not completely like unreciprocated but it just there isn't that meeting of hearts and that level of connection and so it really does make me think deeply uh, about how I interact with God more um, because yeah it's it's the one relationship that we'll have for all of eternity and I just am really valuing the experiences that I'm having in my life that are propelling me to really grow and deepen this relationship. Um, and I think that there are things that like really can only come with time and experience. Uh, because until you have experience, everything is theoretical. And I remember the way that I thought and the way that I felt when I was younger with less experience and I think that it's essential to be young and to be someone full of ideals and vision and you know just running forward without any fear and then I think as we gain life experience and we really come to know different types of people and we have different positions in our lives and different roles then that um, like kind of unrestrained perspective and attitude starts to have, like we start to build up the guardrails that allow us to keep moving forward without spinning out of control. And, you know, I think Pastor Sky talks about this um, several times in the past, you know, several weeks about how important it is for the generations to work towards harmony and connecting because you need the energy and passion and enthusiasm of the young people, but you also need the wisdom and experience and counsel of the older generation. And it shouldn't be one trampling over the other, um, but learning how to balance out the two so that that wisdom doesn't feel like a leash on young people um, but also young people don't uh, stumble in arrogance thinking that you know oh you know I can do it better than this older person um, so yeah I think now that I'm kind of in the middle <laughs> I can share that perspective uh, from a, a wiser place than I used to think. Um, I also liked this point, uh, make yourself worthy of God investing in you. Um, because, yeah, that's, that's what I'm working towards is, um, you know, in economics, they call it a sunk cost when it's like, okay, I spent this money, but... Uh, I just know that I'm not going to get it back. Like <laughs> it's gone. So just forget about it. And that's like the, the one 
perspective I never want God to have towards me that, you know, I poured in all of this into this person and then it, I'm never going to get back that, that level of investment. So yeah, that, that's a nice deep one. Um, let's see. Of course, nothing is impossible for those who take action. Always hopeful. Always hope. God's messages are always just like so encouraging. Even when we're being <laughs> rebuked, he's like, but but there's no point in rebuking somebody who can't be corrected. And you know, I think, oh gosh, I gotta remember what the proverb if it was a proverb or a message. Um where Sunson was praying and asking God, uh, why doesn't he, what is it? Why doesn't he rebuke them anymore? And God said, there's nothing more to rebuke. Like once you stop hearing God's words, then that's when you know it's the end. So, you know, in every message, I just feel this joy and this gratitude that every message that I hear is another opportunity for me to come closer to the heavens and make myself more fitting of their hearts. Um, and then I guess this last point that I had noted down was, even though it is difficult, you must take action on the word. And there was a special message that uh, Sunsum had prepared and we were able to receive that after the Wednesday message. Um, and the title was, even if it is hard, you must take the path of life. And I guess this just comes full circle back to, you know, my concerns about this current stage of life and the challenges that I may be facing. Um, but, you know, being in this history is just everything. And there's nothing I would change if it meant not being in this history. Um, so yeah, you guys just heard a lot about me. <laughs> um, and I guess those are just some of the points that I wanted to share just to kind of keep the, the word fresh in your minds. Uh, this has also been such a good opportunity for me to, to uh, review my notes and reflect on them um, because it's an area that I definitely want to improve on is staying in touch with the messages throughout the week um, and seeing how it turns into this progression over the course of time. So, yes just trying to think if there's anything else that I need to add, but I think I'm just going to keep it short and sweet today. Uh, it is just after 10 o'clock. Keo is still sleeping. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can catch a little nap before he wakes up. <laughs> and I thank you all so much again for your support and for listening. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Bye.